So, so in this case, both teams have lost on their nominated map mode. Um, in in Kokrotsis's case, by an absolute thumping. In TJIF's case, by a razor thin margin. But regardless of the margin, it was a win for the team that didn't pick it. No, I think that's quite cool. So now we are running Turf 4 here. So Turf 4 is planned for uh, we're roughly the lower half divisions for the series. We haven't, I think, quite put our foot down on exactly which division the transition point's going to be at. But there's definitely, you know, we want to make sure people know how to play it. And it's being, it'll be interesting seeing how this works. I did notice going through some of the VODs from, from previous, like, from, sorry, from the seeding tournaments, that there were a few situations where a team that was clearly the better team, like from their performance mostly, in a lot of the 1v1s, in a lot of the, the skirmishes, would get destroyed in turf by a team that they otherwise 3-zipped. Like, would have would have 3-zipped if there hadn't been a turf in that fourth mix. And it really shows some teams actually, you know, make a point of practicing this mode. Not just going into turf queue and mucking around. You know, they clearly take the time to get into some private battles, um, find a team to scrim with, and, you know, play that 4v4 turf game, which really just isn't comparable to the solo turf. Mm. I think something I've been thinking about recently is uh, if everyone's... I think everyone in the scene has been reading uh, FLC's document about um, fluid priorities and roles. But the thing that stands out to me is how does acceleration, as he called it, work in turf? And I think it's something that... Um, compared to all the other game, uh, game modes, um, the last 30, like, the, the game is always won in by definition the last, well, not always won, but there's an opportunity to end a game short within 30 seconds. In turf, that 30 seconds, we know when it's going to start. Um, whereas in the other modes, you can create acceleration, like, or what you call, um, accelerating for uh, victory maybe earlier. So, the way that the dynamic works in turf is very interesting. Mm. And of course, you know, you can have situations where the decisive moments weren't necessarily in that last 30 seconds of the game. You know, you can have situations where, so, you know, poor Macro World Team just gets spawn camp for two, two and a half minutes. Um, in that way, that point of inflection can happen earlier, but the, the end of the game is always going to be relevant. You know, there's always that chance that a team that had gotten what looked like an overwhelming advantage might choke, they might slip, at, you know, 2 minutes 20 of the game elapsed or so, get wiped, and then their opponents have this chance to push all the way back and take back everything. So it's interesting that you talk about maybe being um, small count for 2 and a half minutes, because I feel um, if that's happening, it's, it's not that it was provided at the 30 second mark, it's that the other team... But it's not that once the other team lost, because two and a half minutes is a long time, you should be able to gain some sort of momentum back. And we are actually seeing both of these teams are handling very well this back and forth that happens in the first half of the game, maintaining their uh, nice spacing between each other, and claiming a good amount of the map. Mm. Okay, so a little bit of advantage here to Purple, with, uh, thank God it's Friday, pushing up a lot of peps. Mm, getting very aggressive there, but you know, crop playing it smart and refusing all the one v one opportunities and making sure they fought them on an uneven footing. Yes, yeah, so that was interesting. It did take a little while to take Peps down, but um, he worked on but playing it patiently. They knew they didn't have to panic. It's not like when you have a objective timer uh, right in your face. Uh, in some ways, this timer it is a way that you can actually maybe not stress out. Mm. Okay. Yeah, we've, you know, at that point they had about a minute 20 remaining, and it was much more important for them to stay up and keep on contributing than it was to get a single decisive splat. So we have seen, um, thank God it's Friday, in a, in a more advantageous position throughout this match, but that's not saying that the Cox is doing badly. Not at all. And we do see the special start to come out in 30 seconds left to go, so now the teams are definitely clued in. Thank God, uh, thank God it's Friday. Managing to get a split advantage here. Yes, Crot really need to pull out their absolute best play here if they want to survive. Um, and unfortunately, they're they're not quite able to you know deal with the situations. Lark's going down in that two v one situation that Crot had engineered earlier, and we've seen a pseudo wipe here. And I think we can probably call the game. Yeah. So great push from uh, Judge Friday. I think taking all of the um, great 
hold that they had that whole game and then just pushing just a little bit. Well, there was that threat, you know, where essentially that, you know, where we had that mention of like the, you know, the prot ganging up on their, on their far lead player. They did bite off more than they could chew for a bit. Mm. And they, re you know, they clearly realized very quickly once that had happened and avoided allowing, like, they, they cut that overextension short very quickly once it mm. once it was obvious to them. Uh, strong support from Tenta Missiles there. I think we saw at least five come out. Um, you know, on a map like Walleye Warehouse with its uh, long, straight, narrow corridors, um, we do see that Tenta Missiles providing quite a bit of uh, good utility for the team. Mm. 